I came to office to fight for the people of Missouri. Now Governor Eric Greitens is out. I will resign as governor. Bowing to the cloud of personal and political scandals overhead, but vowing a return. This is not the end of our fight. As an unexpected new era begins. Did you want to be governor? You know, I know what my duty is as lieutenant governor. History in Missouri rapidly being written in this saga. Let us walk off the battlefield with our heads held high. Tonight, what's next as Eric Greitens steps back. News 4 team coverage starts right now. History made today in Missouri. Nearly six months after News 4 first broke the story of Governor Greitens' extramarital affair and alleged threat of blackmail, he is now resigning under pressure. News 4 has team coverage from the Capitol to St. Louis, including exclusive new information on the governor's pending criminal case. News 4's Matt Sesney starts us off live from the Capitol. Matt. Yeah, Courtney, Steve, the governor says his resignation will take effect this Friday at 5 p.m. Now, there is wide speculation in here as to why this happened today. Some say it was the pressure of high dollar donors helping to make the decision. Others say that it was just inevitable. The struggle of Eric Greitens to stay in office had gone on for too long. The last few months have been incredibly difficult for me. For my family. Missouri Governor Eric Greitens talked for just four team, minutes, addressing the scandals and accusations that have plagued him for months, what he called legal harassment from those opposed to him. And people of good faith know that I am not perfect, but I have not broken any laws nor committed any offense worthy of this treatment. The attacks seem to come from all sides lately, from criminal charges over an alleged photo and blackmail of a woman who he was having an affair with, to accusations of wrongdoing in his campaign, which saw testimony today from a former Greitens campaign consultant. Because the governor and his team um, were untruthful to the Missouri Ethics Commission. Um, about that donor list. It was during this special committee hearing when the rumors started spreading about a resignation. By 3 p.m., the committee stopped the hearing and then came the announcement of a news conference. Reporters and cameras kept waiting outside the governor's office. His announcement coming in at 4.30. Visitors to the Capitol were taken by surprise. It, it kind of feels like it was a long time coming and it was probably something that needed to happen. Many in the Capitol left quickly, including Republican Sarah Steelman, a former state senator and current commissioner of administration appointed by Greitens. The time has come though to tend to those who have been wounded and to care for those who need us most. So for the moment, let us walk off the battlefield with our heads held high. The governor appeared to be choking up at that point of his news conference. Almost immediately, the special committee here investigating the governor has now canceled all of their hearings for the remainder of this week. Their work, I'm told, now effectively over with the governor resigning. I was also told by several sources here close to the committee that this committee was actually leaning towards at least five articles of impeachment against the governor. We're live inside the state capitol in Jefferson City. Matt Sesney, News 4. With the governor resigning, this is the next man in line, Lieutenant Governor Mike Parson. News source Alexis Zotos is live in Jefferson City. And Alexis, you spoke with Parson several times tonight. Courtney, that's right. I spoke with him as he was arriving to his office at the Capitol today and as he was leaving here tonight. That door is actually still open tonight because there are members of his staff still here, still working out the details of what happens next. He did release a brief statement today, though, saying he is ready to serve. I just received a phone call earlier this evening and actually at my home I was actually out at the farm. At the Arriving to the state capitol around 6 o'clock, like most Missourians, Lieutenant Governor Mike Parson said he had no heads up about the governor's resignation, but he said he's ready to serve. Did you want to be governor? You know, I know what my duty is as lieutenant governor, you know, and that's always a possibility that occur. You just know or probably don't ever think it's going to occur, but uh, you know, we're going to be prepared when the day comes. Hello. So who is Mike, Mike Parson, Parson, the soon to be 57th governor of Missouri? Another year has passed. Prior to his election as lieutenant governor, Parson office. was a state senator and state rep. He has a law enforcement background, serving as Polk County Sheriff from 93 until 2005. He operates a cow and calf operation three and a half hours southwest of St. Louis. 
He often posts about it on social media. He is an advocate of the Second Amendment, a supporter of right to work, and vocal about strengthening laws that support and protect farmers. But tonight, he says he has a message for all Missourians. You know, Missouri is going to be fine. Missouri is going to move forward. Uh, Missouri is much larger than any one elected official, so I look forward to Missouri is going to come together and we're going to move forward. And that's what uh, my job is going to be as a leader and our other leaders in this state will step up and we'll lead this state. Have you spoken to Governor Greitens? I have not. Well, you heard him right there. He has not spoken to Governor Greitens. Now, what happens next? Again, what they're working on tonight, trying to figure out when, where that swearing in happens. They said they do promise to release some more information tomorrow. I can tell you I've been going through a lot of statements tonight from both Republicans and Democrats. They have all wished him well in the transition of power. We're live from the state capitol. Alexis Otos, News 4. All right, our Lauren Traeger has been breaking and following the story that got us here tonight. Lauren, you've confirmed that more news will come out tomorrow about the governor's criminal case. Yeah, that's right. That's something we're tracking right now. The St. Louis City prosecutor says they have reached a fair and just resolution on one of the pending cases against the governor, but a source close to the governor tells us that the prosecutor will be dismissing the charge of computer tampering, meaning the governor would no longer be charged with anything at all. For those who would be moved to vengeance, let us allow history and God to bring justice. Even today, the governor adamant he's innocent of allegations against him. Greitens faced two separate investigations, one involving an alleged photo taken during his extramarital affair. The other involved how the donor list for the charity, The Mission Continues, wound up in the hands of his campaign. For months, the governor said he would not resign despite the investigations, so we do not know what exactly changed his mind Tuesday. Something happened. Um, whether it was just a personal decision of his own between he and his family, uh, whether there was more evidence that was discovered in either of the cases. Tuesday morning, though, a Cole County judge ruled that lawmakers could explore documents from a secretive organization that donated to the governor's campaign. The chair of the House committee indicated recently he'd been talking to the FBI about the governor's campaign finances and lawmakers were moving forward with impeachment proceedings. A special prosecutor from Jackson County, Jean Peters Baker, says her investigation into allegations involving the governor's affair continues tonight. But again, the St. Louis City prosecutor investigating the charity case says they do have a resolution on that case. And of course, as soon as we get official word on that tomorrow, we'll let you guys know. All right, Lauren, look forward to that. Thank you. All right, right now, lawmakers in Missouri and Washington, D.C. are reacting to the news of the governor's resignation. News Force Chris Nagus continues our team coverage. Well, I was surprised that it happened today. Just like many of her constituents, State Senator Jill Shoup watched the governor's resignation on television. She did not see a remorseful Eric Greitens. Once again, this is a person who I don't think takes responsibility for his actions. Representative Jean Evans also watched as the Greitens era came to an end. She was one of the first to call on the governor to quit. I was actually relieved. I feel like this is really uh, the right step for the people of Missouri. In Washington, D.C., both Missouri senators offered brief statements. Senator Blunt saying the governor made the best decision for his family and the state. Senator McCaskill avoided mentioning the governor by name, saying, I wish Lieutenant Governor Parson the best. I look forward to working with him. In Jefferson City, Attorney General Josh Hawley said Governor Greitens has done the right thing today. But the governor isn't finished yet. Since his resignation isn't effective until Friday, the governor still has a lot of power over more than 100 pending pieces of legislation. So the governor will have them Friday, which means he can sign them, veto them, or leave them alone. That will be his choice. But even if Governor Greitens vetoes legislation on his way out the door, lawmakers could still override his veto this fall. Chris Nagus, News 4. Many of you have been talking about the governor's sudden exit at the dinner table, even on social media. Here's News 4's Venton Blandon. I never thought this would happen. Uh, a Navy SEAL. Paul Gonzalez did not expect happy hour to sour at this Clayton bar. I absolutely thought that uh, uh, he would have never resigned, uh, but it happened. Uh, very, I'm not very happy about it, but uh, it is what it is, and we'll see what happens from here. Susan Kelzer watched the resignation live on News 4. I just really wish that he would have said, I'm really sorry that this has taken place and that it's been a distraction 
uh, to the running of the state government. People on social media are talking. One Twitter user likening the governor's quitting to Roseanne's ouster, calling this a great day. A Grindon supporter writing on his Facebook, she thought he could have been one of the best, then praying God has something wonderful for the governor. But Bob Elfenbaum can't help but question the timing. With all the um, movement of the courts that I was, I guess it makes you suspicious about what really happened, although we really never will know now. I think anyone wants a governor with good morals and everyone makes mistakes, but own up to it. In Clayton, Vincent Bland, News 4. After his election, Governor Greitens was a rising star in national politics. That took a turn in January. Here's a look at the major developments leading to today's announcement. On January 10th, News 4 broke the story of Governor Greitens' 2015 affair with his former hairdresser. That same night, shortly after delivering his State of the State address, the governor and First Lady Sheena Greitens issued a joint statement acknowledging the affair. A month later, on February 22nd, the St. Louis grand jury indicted the governor on charges of invasion of privacy in connection with the woman's claim that he took a photo of her while she was partially nude without her permission. The following week, on February 26th, the Special House Committee was formed in Jefferson City to investigate possible charges for impeachment. On April 24th, another bombshell. Kim Gardner announced she was charging the governor with felony computer tampering for alleged misuse of a donor list from his veterans charity, The Mission Continues. On May 14th, the governor claimed victory when Circuit Attorney Gardner dismissed the invasion of privacy charges, saying she could not prosecute the case after the judge approved the defense request to call her as a witness. The case was then moved to the Circuit Attorney in Kansas City, who was appointed as a special prosecutor. As the Special Investigative Committee also continued their investigation, the governor announced his resignation. Today, I am announcing that I will resign as governor of Missouri News 4 will continue to follow the developments in the wake of Governor Greitens' resignation. There is much more in the story on CamelV.com. You can also download the CamelV News app and select Enable Push Notifications to get the latest as they happen. And our coverage continues on air tomorrow morning. News 4 this morning starting at 4 a.m. Turning now to weather, what's left of Alberto is dumping heavy rains across several states tonight, including Missouri and Illinois. Meteorologist Megan Danahe is tracking it all as it develops. Yeah, we don't often talk about a tropical system in our neck of the woods, but we've got it here. You can see on SkyTracker Doppler a definite spin in the atmosphere. That is west of Nashville. That's the center of what was Alberto, and it is impacting our weather. Taking a look a little closer in, that low, the big L that you see, that is the center of Alberto. Its track is to the northwest now. It's expected to turn to the north and then the northeast as we go into tomorrow, and that's going to bring some pockets of heavy rain tonight into tomorrow, especially tomorrow morning. Right now you can see what's left out there from that initial band that moved through earlier. That's pushing off to the west. We have a new band coming out of Kentucky that's also pushing off to the west. So we have more showers headed in this direction and they will be pretty heavy rains. This is at 2 a.m. I'll take you to 4 a.m. and notice we're still expecting some rain. So be on guard for a wet Wednesday morning commute. I'll show you how long it lasts and a threat for strong storms on Thursday coming up. All new at 10, a driver leaves a big mess in, north, in the North St. Louis County neighborhood. A local family is left paying the price and searching for the driver who ran away. Plus, took the hot cup of coffee, which was just filled up, and he threw it in her face. A shocking incident inside a McDonald's. Find out what set a customer off to throw hot coffee at the manager. Every morning, every evening, and every night. More people get their news from News 4 than from any other source. I'm Steve Savard. And I'm Courtney Bryant. With major investigations, tracking storms closer, and first with breaking news. Let's go to Lauren Traeger live at the courthouse. Thanks for making News 4 your number one source for news. And if you haven't yet, turn to 4 and see what you've been missing. News 4, watching out for you. Your summer starts here with a great deal on a new Toyota. Right now, lease a new 2018 RAV4 for only $259 per month, including $1,000 lease bonus cash, or get $1,500 customer cash. Get your Toyota today. 
Toyota. Let's go places. Since Slim 180, I love walking in my closet and picking out clothes again, going on walks with my husband. I'm active with my grandchildren, all because of Slim 180. Get ready for summer with this incredible limited time offer from Slim 180. Just $6 a week based on a full program. Make a Slim 180. Call 888-754-6111 or visit slim180stl.com. I came to Slim 180. I lost 50 pounds and I've never felt better in my life. This edition of News 4 is brought to you by your local Honda dealers, as reliable as the cars themselves. For more information, visit gatewayhondadealers.com. Only on News 4, a Florissant family says they awoke to a car that crashed on top of their two vehicles. The driver who caused the damage took off, leaving them to pay for it. Now the family and police are having a hard time finding the person responsible. News 4's Ashley Lincoln explains what they're doing to track him down and hold him accountable. Steve Clifton says what he thought was sound from a Monday morning thunderstorm. I heard what my brain thought was thunder. Was actually this. A 99 Buick Park Avenue on it and on top of his family's cars, damaging their Honda Civic and a Jeep. Could you believe what you were looking at? No, I was rather shocked. Clifton says the crash woke him up at 3.30 in the morning, and he believes speed was a factor. Must have been moving pretty good. But he and police are still trying to figure out the calls because they can't find the driver. The uh, driver of the vehicle ran uh, as soon as my neighbor came out. I found police say the car was uninsured and unregistered in the St. Louis area. Stand up. Turn yourself in. A wallet was left in the car, but when police went to that address, the homeowners didn't know where this person was. Clifton says he hopes this person turns himself in and he's glad no one got hurt. Very grateful. Uh, normally my neighbors are out walking their dogs at 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning and they were very, uh, very fortunate. Ashley Lincoln, News 4. Stunning video tonight from a McDonald's in Washington State. A customer asked for a refill and a cup of coffee, but when he didn't get his senior discount, he throws the coffee in the manager's face and then runs out the door. The manager suffered severe burns to the side of her face and neck. Right now we're looking at assault charges, depending on the seriousness of the burns. Um, it's going to depend on uh, what degree of assault we go. Police have not yet found the man responsible, but they believe he may still be in the area. The manager was treated at the hospital and released. You might have had a hard time getting a Starbucks coffee this afternoon. Today, 8,000 locations closed for racial bias training. It comes after two black men were arrested at a Philadelphia location. News 4's Emily Pritchard reports on how the day impacted local Starbucks. Why? Tammy Howard is grateful Starbucks decided to put a store along West Florissant in Ferguson. We really do need it in this area, especially with the Michael Brown issue that went on and a lot of the loss of businesses, so that's a positive thing. But this isn't your typical site. While they serve up coffee, it's also a community store, the only in the area that partners with the Urban League of Metropolitan St. Louis to help the youth. We give them an opportunity to learn um, about some of the basic skills like teamwork, customer service, cash handling. Project Empower Director Monique Williams-Moore says it gives area kids the tools to get their first jobs. Just... One of the Starbucks heads said on Tuesday, it's about giving the community a chance to be successful. We've opened stores in Ferguson, in Bedford-Stuyvesant, in Inglewood, in Oakland. Uh, throughout America where traditionally a brand like Starbucks is not located and we've done this so that we can be a beacon of hope for the community. A sense of community is what this store gives the kids that train inside these walls. They feel like uh, there are people here that um, want to see them achieve their goals and want to see them succeed. And, Williams Moore adds that she hopes other businesses will take notice. I'm hoping that they're creating an industry standard. You know, um, what more can we as a community do uh, to help the young people achieve their goals? Emily Pritchard, News 4. We had a pretty good line of thunder and heavy rain moving into the metro right about sunset. This is what's left. It has fallen apart again right around uh, the metro area, but we see some showers around Litchfield and a new band coming out of Kentucky. This activity is moving from east to west. We did get some pretty spectacular photographs. This is from our storm spotter Amy Kerber in Granite City. You can actually see 
two rainbows in that shot. Love that picture. The sky was lit up as the sun was setting. We had several cloud features like shelf clouds and this was just a beautiful shot taken in Perryville. Another one of our forewarned storm spotters, Timothy Holland Davis, and we saw a double rainbow in Fairview Heights. Jana Barthold sent this in. I love that photograph as well. I caught a rainbow on our BJC Sky Camera Network from Memorial Hospital East in Shiloh. This is all courtesy of what's left of Alberto. It's a, a low pressure. You can really see the spin on the radar here sitting just west of Nashville. The track on this is going to be to the north and then it makes a hard turn off to the north and east. And that's going to bring some pockets of heavy rain, maybe a little thunder through the overnight into tomorrow. Then we get a break tomorrow night. And on Thursday, a totally separate system brings us a chance for rain and thunderstorms. In fact, this system is going to help push what's left of Alberto back off to the Great Lakes. So we're going to see at least uh, several opportunities of showers and storms going through the next 48 hours. This is at 2 a.m. You can see some pockets of very heavy rainfall that will likely linger into the morning commute. So do be on guard for some pockets of heavy rain early on Wednesday morning temperatures in the 70s. Now just when it seems all of this is moving off to the east, I want to watch the Mississippi River corridor here for new development. This is during the afternoon on Wednesday. We'll see highs around 89. It will stay humid. New showers and thunderstorms will develop in the afternoon and then push east and out by Wednesday evening. So Wednesday evening will be quiet. Wednesday night should be quiet until Thursday morning. Might see a few showers and thunderstorms, perhaps a couple of rounds of storms on Thursday, one in the morning and then one in the afternoon and evening. And the one in the afternoon and evening could produce some hail or gusty wind. So we need to be on guard for at least a threat of some severe storms. This is coming on Thursday afternoon and evening. Tonight and tomorrow, really the only threat is going to be heavy rain out there, pockets of heavy rain and a little bit of thunder as we move through tonight and tomorrow. Your four degree guarantee for tomorrow, 89 in the afternoon. Expect to see 90 on Thursday. And those two days will have the opportunity for showers and storms. Friday looks dry and hot with a high near 93. For the upcoming weekend, we have another storm system that's actually going to bring a chance of storms for the Saturday and Sunday day games. And it will bring some cooler air in here. We'll see highs in the low 80s on Sunday. All right. Thank you, Megan. Maurice Cardinals looking for a little redemption today. Sure, Steve. Yesterday, the Cardinals got pushed around by the first place Milwaukee Brewers. But tonight, we're going to show you how the Cards had the conga line going. And you know what that means? Baseballs were flying out of the park. That's ahead in sports.